Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome back to my channel. In this video series, I will walk you through how to make the Magfly backpack. It is a new pattern that is available on my website and it comes in two different sizes, the mini version and the regular version. To make the Magfly backpack, you will have to purchase the pattern. I will include the link to the pattern and all supplies I used in this tutorial in the description box below. If you would like to learn how to make this backpack, then keep on watching. However, before we start the project, let me show you the difference and similarities between the sizes and all the details of the backpack up close. I like to use the regular size whenever I go to the market or the shops because it can hold quite a lot. It would be a great backpack for school or work because you can fit a small laptop, books, journals, snacks and whatever else you need to carry with you during the day. I haven't tried it yet, but it also could be a good backpack to take when traveling. The mini version is perfect to carry around as a casual daily backpack when all you need is your essentials. And I think it would be a perfect size for older children and teenagers. Both Magfly and Mini Magfly backpacks are using large darts to shape the front and give the backpack more of a 3D shape, especially when you look at it from the side. There is a zipper pocket on the front so you can access your smaller belongings quickly whenever you want. You could even put a mobile phone when using the regular Magfly backpack. But as you can see on the mini version, the pocket is a little bit too short, so instead I like to keep my keys, lipstick or spare mask here. The exterior side pockets are perfect to keep a small bottle of water or an umbrella. On the back you will find a handle so you can hold the backpack with ease and also a contrasting trim. The regular Magfly backpack has wide padded shoulder straps to ensure it is comfortable to wear, especially when fully loaded, and uses ladder lock sliders and webbing to make them adjustable. The mini Magfly backpack has basic one-piece adjustable straps that can be found in most bags, and use sliders and D-rings to adjust the length. So depending on the size of your backpack, you will need a different type of hardware. There is an oval base, which I know can be a little bit tricky if you haven't done one before, but I can assure you it is completely doable. You just need to take it slowly. Both sizes use a zipper at the top with zipper tabs on each end of the zipper, and the roomy interior features a zipper and sleep pockets so you can stay organized. Magfly is the perfect backpack for adults, teenagers and children. To find out exactly how to print and assemble the pattern pieces, you can find a separate video tutorial where I walk you through the process in more details. Uh, I will just shortly mention today that on the first page of the pattern you will find a pattern layout. This will tell you exactly how the pattern pieces look like and you can find out that the, some of the pattern pieces are larger than one page, so you're going to have to assemble multiple pages together. Other pattern pieces fit one page, so you can just cut them out. One more thing I want to mention is that uh, a lot of the pattern pieces are rectangular in shape. If you don't want to print them out, you can use the measurements provided in the sewing instructions. When you are ready to print your pattern, first print the page with the test me calibration square. Then you're going to measure it to double check if your printer settings are correct. If everything looks good, go ahead and print the remaining pages. To assemble the pattern that is on multiple pages, you're going to have to locate the triangles with the corresponding letter and number inside that triangle. When you find two corresponding triangles, you're going to trim the page along that margin. You can stick those two pages together to create a diamond shape. So just so you see what I mean, I'll pretend that I've cut it along the margin by folding it. So when I line the pages up and I line up my triangles, I will have a diamond shape just like that. 
and then you're going to repeat the process on the remaining pattern pieces. Once all your pattern pieces are assembled, then you can cut them out. And on the last two pages of the sewing instructions, you will find cutting labels. You can print those pages as well, cut the individual labels, and then use them to label your pattern pieces. To complete today's project, you will need an external fabric and lining fabric. I am making the mini Mac fly backpack in this tutorial and we'll use this woven cotton fabric as a main feature of my backpack and we'll add this four leather fabric as an accent. For my lining, I am using waterproof canvas and also decided to use two different colors. So I'm using the white waterproof canvas for the main lining pieces and this printed waterproof canvas on all pockets. The choice of interfacing and stabilizers for the backpack will highly depend on the type of fabric that you are working with and also on the final results that you want your backpack to be. So if you prefer more sloucher bags, you may want to use something like fusible fleece. If you prefer more sturdy and structured backpacks, you may prefer to use something like sewing or fusible foam or maybe Decoville Heavy instead. I would highly recommend fusing some woven interfacing to the back of the fabric, especially if you're using woven fabric or fabric that frays or stretch a lot. Number five zipper with two zipper pulls. This one is for the main top compartment of the backpack. Uh, the measurements are provided in the sewing instructions and also one shorter number five zipper for the external front pocket and one number three zipper for the lining zipper pocket. You will need a ruler to take some measurements. If you are making mini Mac fly backpack, it would be helpful to have a ruler on hand with the 60 or 30 degrees angles marked on the ruler because we're going to use it on the strap connector. You will need your favorite marking tools, a seam ripper just in case if something goes wrong. If you are making mini Mac fly backpack, you will need two one inch strap adjusters and two D rings. However, if you are making the regular size, you will need one inch webbing and also one inch leather lock sliders. It is good to have a lighter on hand if you are working with the webbing to burn the edges to stop them from fraying. You will need some snips and scissors. This is optional, but you might want to add some rivets. So you will also need some sort of a hole puncher and maybe a hand press or similar tools to set them in. Also, if you would like, you can add a metal tag to the front of your backpack or maybe a woven label to inside the lining. We'll need some clips or pins to hold the fabric in place. Double-sided tape is also uh, useful today, especially if you're working with cork, vinyl or similar fabric that is very difficult to press. I like to have a pliers on hand, especially if I'm installing my metal tack. Sometimes I found it difficult to bend those prongs. To help me with the bulky seams, I like to have an owl and a hump jumper on hand as well. And to make nice and crisp corners, I always have a corner shaper nearby my machine. I know sewing an oval base or making rounded corners might be a little bit tricky for some, especially because the fabric have a tendency to move and slide and using just clips might not be enough to hold the fabric in place. So some of my testers recommended using a stapler to staple the fabric around the curves to prevent them from shifting. You will also need multi-surface glue and a fray check glue if you are working with woven fabrics. Depending on the size of the McFly backpack you're making, either the regular size or the mini, you're going to have to cut different style of straps and strap connectors. For the regular McFly, the larger size, you will need to cut four straps from external fabric. You can cut all four pieces out of the same fabric or you can use different colors like me today and use one of them as an accent. 
those straps are much shorter in comparison to the mini size because we're going to use webbing and a leather lock sliders to make those strap adjustable. For the mini size, you're going to cut only two pieces of, for your straps. So one piece will make one strap and they are much longer, more than twice the length because we're going to make the adjustable straps out of those pieces. Also, the connectors are different. So you have a triangle shape connectors for the regular McFly backpack. So you're going to cut two of them from your external fabric. And then for the mini McFly backpack, you have also two connectors. However, they are just rectangle in shape. And you also need to cut two pieces from external fabric. The remaining pieces have the same shape for the regular and mini McFly backpacks, but, but obviously they will have a different sizes. So you're going to have to cut two zipper tabs from external fabric, two side panels from external and lining fabric, two zipper casings, from external fabric and two from your lining fabric. One base panel from external fabric and one from your lining fabric. Two side pockets. These will have to be cut as a mirror images. So if you take your pattern piece and let's say you have the external fabric uh, with right side facing up. You're going to cut one piece like this and then you're going to flip the pattern. The label of the pattern is facing down and you're going to place on the right side of your external fabric. So it is a mirror image at the end. So when you see and you compare those two pieces, they are exactly the same, just a mirror image. And you're going to do exactly the same thing for your lining fabric. So as you see, I have both of them mirror images. Then you will need to cut one back trim from external fabric. One handle from external fabric one front panel from external fabric, one pocket overlay from non-fraying fabric. I'm using the faux leather for this today. One pocket trim, again from non-fraying fabric. So you can use a cork for leather or vinyl for that. One back from external fabric and one back from your lining fabric. When you take the front pattern piece, you're going to cut the lining and the stabilizer as it is, using the entire pattern piece as a template. You're going to do that on fold. Before you cut it out from external fabric, however, you will need to fold the pattern piece along that line here. So what I like to do is to place it on top of my fabric. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to trace the top. Then I'm going to fold the pattern piece along that line. So I'm going to flip it like this. Then I can trace the remaining sides. So basically at the end, you have the middle panel missing from your front piece. And we're going to assemble the zipper pocket here. You also need to cut two zipper pockets from your lining fabric, one front pocket from your lining fabric, and one slip pocket from your lining fabric. Once you interface the back of the fabric with woven interfacing, it's time to stabilize the external pieces. To do this, you're going to take your pattern piece and if you are using sewing stabilizer, such as this foam, you're going to use the entire pattern piece as a template. 
if you are using fusible fleece, decoville light or other fusible stabilizers, you might want to consider reducing bulks at the seams. So to do that, use the dotted lines around the pattern piece as a template. So your stabilizer is much smaller because it is without a seam allowance. So to stabilize your backpack properly, you will need to stabilize the front panel, the back, base, zipper casings, side panels, and if you are doing the regular McFly backpack, you will also need to use some stabilizer to make the padded straps. You can put the front stabilizer aside for later because we need to assemble the entire front panel before we attach the stabilizer to it. Because I'm mixing different types of stabilizers today, I'm using the foam stabilizer for the front, back, the base panel and my straps for the regular McFly backpack. I'm going to pin them around to the back of the panel and then baste around all sides. However, for the side panels and the zipper casing, I decided to use the fusible fleece instead today to reduce the bulk at the seams because I am sewing on domestic machine. So because this is a fusible stabilizer, I'm going to take it to the pressing station and fuse it to the back of the fabric. So for the back panel and my base, I can just place my stabilizer on, on the back of the fabric, line it up, and then using clips, I'm going to clip it around all sides. Here you go, just like that. Then I'm going to take this to the machine and using two millimeter seam allowance, I'm going to baste the stabilizer around all sides. Then I can repeat that on the base panel. It is best to use the longest stitch on your machine. Before we stabilize the straps for the regular McFly backpack, we need to transfer the markings from the pattern piece to the wrong side of the fabric. So you have four strap pieces and on the wrong side of the fabric, you will need to mark the position of the stabilizer. So the final measurements of the strap would be about five centimeters and that window inside is five centimeters wide so you need to center it on the wrong side of your strap pieces i already marked that on all my pieces and then the next thing to do is you're going to take the strap stabilizer pattern piece and we're going to draw the curved line on the bottom edge of your strap so in case if you are using a directional print you need to make sure you do it on the bottom of the strap pieces but you only do it on two pieces so I already have done that on one to show you what I mean and then I'm going to do that on the other one I like to line up the strap stabilizer pattern piece inside that window against that bottom line and then I'm going to draw the curve Just like that this is going to be our stitching line later on so i like to do it on those two pieces that i will fuse the stabilizer to but you can do it on whichever two you like it doesn't really matter as long as it's done in in pairs so if you used two different fabrics like me you need to make sure you do it on only on one type of fabric not on the other one because we're going to pair them together to make the strap so you only need one line when you stitch that curve if you're using a fusible stabilizer like me today or fusible fleece go ahead and center the stabilizer inside that window and then fuse it with an iron you're going to do that on both straps if you don't have fusible stabilizers you can use sewing stabilizers instead as well in that case uh, because you don't want to stitch like you've done for the external panels you can just keep those two stabilizers aside for later and I will tell you when to add them later on please also transfer other markings from the pattern piece to the wrong side of the fabric such as midpoints 
or the dart shaping because the external panel needs to be assembled first we don't really have to worry about transferring the dart shaping at this point we will do it later on however you can transfer the dart shaping to the lining piece there are different ways to do it but i will show you a couple of my favorites most of the time when i need to transfer the dart i will place the pattern piece on the wrong side of the fabric line it up and then use a pin or a needle and pierce the paper pattern where the top of my dart is so to make this easier for you i've marked a little cross inside that circle so you know exactly where to pierce it so i would pierce the paper pattern lift the paper and mark a dot where my pin or needle is piercing the fabric from there, it's easier to write, to draw it on, on this particular pattern because you need to have one centimeter seam allowance along those two edges here. So I will take my ruler and put one centimeter line at the edge of my fabric. And then mark a line from that, that dot towards the bottom. And then I do with the same thing on the on the other side. So again, I would line up the edge of my fabric with a one centimeter mark. And again, draw a line this way. So this way I can easily draw my dart shaping without worrying about doing something wrong. If you like this method, then you can either transfer those markings to the other side of the pattern piece because obviously you have to cut it on fold and repeat the process otherwise you can take a scissors cut the cut the dart in the middle and you can either cut away along that line but because I know I'm going to use this pattern in the future again I prefer to just fold the pattern piece along that line. Here you go, just like that. Then I can again place it on top, line it up, and then I can easily transfer more markings. Whichever way you do it, always make sure the tip of the dart is at the same distance from the top. So you can just double check and measure it to make sure. Yeah, it's, it's fine for me. We're going to repeat the same process once we attach the stabilizer to the external front panel. So remember those tips. Join me in the next video if you are ready to begin making the McFly backpack. The second video is all about the lining, so we are going to make the lining slip pocket and the zipper pocket with the contrasting overlay and also sew the front darts. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Stay crafty friends!